Heather and Harry are father and daughter, and they seem to be incredibly close. Yet in the Silent Hill series, we only see the two on screen together once, in the moment they are parted forever. The one interaction we do see is a short, one-sided phone call, tragic in how ordinary it is. Neither of them have any idea that this is goodbye. The story of Silent Hill 3 is driven by Heather's love for her father, but without any interactions between the two, the story has to connect them emotionally in other ways. To do so, Silent Hill 3's gameplay and world design are modeled almost entirely after the first game, to reinforce the bond between Harry and Heather, to show that the daughter is now walking in the footsteps of her father. Where most Silent Hill games reuse certain plot tropes, items, and locations, few have so many things in common as 1 and 3 do. Both games include levels set in hospitals, and it's likely the only reason they aren't both in Alcamilla is because that would have required the team to model Alcamilla for the PS2. Instead, they use Brookhaven. But they did recreate the amusement park for Silent Hill 3, and Heather and Harry are the only people in the entire series to visit this location. It's also the last location they go to before entering nowhere. They're the only characters to enter a mall as a level. Heather starts in one, and Harry has a short level in a mall, which leads him to fall into the basement and fight a strange-looking worm. Heather also descends below the mall to fight a worm-like creature. They also both travel through the sewers, which none of the other games in the original four use. The effect of having Heather pass through these same locations, even finding notes written by her father, reinforces the point of the narrative. This is Heather's journey into adulthood, and to do it, she's following in her father's footsteps. She's choosing, like him, to take a stand against evil in this world, even in the face of overwhelming odds. She's showing that she's far more like the man that adopted her than she is the demon inside her. The puzzles are similar too. Both characters perform chemistry at various points in their games. Harry dissolves the old man's hand with chemicals. Heather mixes them to defeat the bugs in the hallway. Both use fire to open the way forward. Harry burns some old vines off a grate. Heather creates a fire that destroys a painting over a door. And the last puzzle in both games involves finding five items to unlock the door in nowhere. For Harry, it's five random magical objects. For Heather, it's five tarot cards. Both are related to magic and the occult. Both are in sets of five, and both are used to unlock the same door inside Alessa's room leading to the final confrontation. Heather defeats a monstrous creature by reading words aloud, but this happens after she reads a fairy tale style story that tells her what she needs to do. Harry also defeats a boss by reading a fairy tale that instructs him how to do it. Both games also have split head bosses, the split worm in three and the split head in one. These are the only games in the series that use fainting as a plot device. Harry often faints and reawakens in a new place, or in an otherworld version of the same location. He's clearly affected by the transitions, having headaches at various points in the game. Heather, too, faints because of the transformation, which are implied to be like contractions related to the monstrous baby inside her. She even hears her father's voice during one fainting spell. These two are the only ones who do this, and the only characters to show pain during an otherworld transition, implying there's a physical connection between them and the otherworld. Heather's is obvious, but Harry's is far more ambiguous. 
Possibly his emotional bond with Cheryl has him feeling her sympathetic pain. More similarities. Both games focus on the seal of Metatron as a plot point, and it's rarely mentioned in the series again. Both have monsters that can auto-kill them unless you have a specific item to stop them. The focus on Alglophotus is a plot device that drastically changes the end of the game. Both have climactic battles on a carousel, both fight a form of God as the final boss, and both face the same types of characters during the story. The first is the Holy Woman. Silent Hill 1 has Dahlia, Silent Hill 3 has Claudia. Visibly, they're very similar. They're both barefoot, wearing drab, religious outfits, and they speak ominously and mysteriously. They have the same goals, to allow for the birth of God. The second is the self-centered man, Kaufman and Vincent. Both of them assist the main character, but only to fuel their own goals, and ultimately, their selfish behavior leads to their deaths. In some ways, you could also compare Douglas to Sybil, as both are characters who want to help the hero succeed, and who might be killed depending on the end of the game. But what is the point of these myriad similarities? Why are these games so similar? For one, Silent Hill 3 is a direct sequel to the first game, so it's important that they have some similarities to connect them. But it also has a narrative point. The first game showed us Harry valuing his daughter as a person, not as a thing or a monster with magic powers. He saw Alessa and Cheryl as people, which allowed Alessa the chance to be reborn. And he raised Heather, and clearly saw her as her own person and loved her, rather than seeing her as a possible threat or a monster. But in three, Harry is gone and Heather is alone, which means it's now up to her as to what to do about the cult. As she moves forward, taking the same path her father did, she remembers more of the past and the cult's desires. Now she has to decide who she wants to be, the person her father raised her to be, or the person Claudia and the cult want her to be. The connections between the two games help to reaffirm what the plot is telling us. Heather chooses Harry. She is his child. She chooses to follow his path, to recognize suffering as a normal part of life, rather than killing everyone to create a false paradise. Hi everyone, thank you for watching this week's Silent Hill Symbolism. I'm here with a special announcement about an event coming up this weekend. Five years ago in August, I lost my father to lung cancer. In order to try and raise funds to research the eradication of this horrible disease, I'm going to be playing some Silent Hill games this Sunday at 12 p.m. EST. We'll start with Silent Hill 3 and see where things go from there, and any money donated during the stream will be going to the American Lung Association. We're going to have some raffles, some games, and a lot of fun. So please join me and consider donating if you can, and spread the word so that other people can know about this opportunity and hopefully help me to raise some money in honor of my dad. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.